Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A judge decides the fate of a man who shot and killed a 17 year old. What investigators are saying about his family connections to the cartel. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis sends two planes of undocumented migrants to Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts. How other lawmakers are reacting to that move. Outside with live cam counting our blessings and again this morning because we've actually dropped down into the 60s here in South Central Texas, which is a very nice thing considering we are smack dab in the middle of the month of September. It can be quite brutal this time yes. of year. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 15th of September. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it's nice when you step outside. You can definitely tell a little less humidity out there. It's so nice. If Justin was a teacher, we'd ask him to do a field trip today, but oh, yeah. I think we're inside. <laughs> Mm, field trip sounds nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is so beautiful out there. We're starting off in the 60s. Keep in mind, we're still in summer, so we still got another week or so left of summer and temperatures will still be warm this afternoon, but we'll take anything we can get when it comes to these morning lows. 69 right now. I'm thinking we could drop a couple more degrees before it's all said and done. So it is going to be a great, great start to your Thursday. 61 Kerrville, 64 Uvalde, 66 Pleasanton. We're still at 70 in Gonzales, but around Bear County, Look at Holotus, 66 right now. We're at 66 over there at Randolph. And again, temperatures may drop just a little bit more. Hey, do you need to pass along that today is an ozone action day. So for those who are sensitive to ozone, generally those with uh, asthma, keep that in mind. This is a third day in a row we've had an ozone action day. Weather headlines. Well, we're expecting the clear skies this morning and then some clouds this afternoon. We had a flyover, a flyover of the International Space Station yesterday. We got some pics to show you. We'll tell you when you can see it again. Plus, we talked about summer. Above average heat is ahead and Tropical Storm Fiona has formed. Where is she headed? We'll have all those answers for you coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. A cartel connection and a gruesome killing. Edgar de la Cruz shot and killed 17-year-old Sebastian Carpio before burning the body in a stolen vehicle. An ID investigator say he got from family connections to the drug cartels. He shared that his uncle told him stories of how people get rid of bodies in Mexico and for the cartel, which gave him the idea of how to not get caught after shooting Sebastian. Testimony came to light as Dela Cruz aged out of the Texas juvenile system. He served 11 months of his 25 year sentence. Instead of releasing him on parole, a judge decided yesterday here in San Antonio that Dela Cruz must continue his prison sentence in the adult prison system. We have some late breaking news overnight. The White House is reporting that President Biden has reached a deal on a tentative railway labor agreement. That's according to a statement released by the White House website. The major railroad strike could have paralyzed the nation's supply chain and transportation rail service if both sides didn't come to an agreement by tomorrow. Biden officials uh, hosted labor contract talks late into the night last night to avert the potential shutdown ahead of tomorrow's deadline. So big news there. And now to another story developing overnight. Florida's governor sending dozens of migrants on planes to Massachusetts. It's a move that echoes Governor Greg Abbott's decision to bus migrants to other states, like places like Chicago and New York. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details. This morning, another Republican leader is sending undocumented migrants to a sanctuary state, escalating the standoff over the surge of migration at the southern border. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' office says it chartered two planes to fly migrants from Florida to Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. The island off of Cape Cod is famous for its multi-million dollar homes. Fox News first airing video of the migrants deboarding, about 50, reportedly from Venezuela. Some as young as two years old. Local government officials say they had no advance notice. The airport director said that local officials had no idea that these immigrants were coming, that these planes were coming. But he said that there was there were vans outside that were waiting for the immigrants. DeSantis saying in a statement, states like Massachusetts, New York and California will better facilitate the care of these individuals who they have invited into our country by incentivizing illegal immigration through their designation as sanctuary states. 
Texas Governor Greg Abbott began busing migrants to other states in April. Just yesterday, Illinois' governor called up the National Guard to help with migrants sent to Chicago from Texas, calling Abbott's move a stunt. They won't tell us how many infants, or children, seniors, or families are on board. They won't provide any information that would actually help their fellow Americans welcome and care for these human beings. Back on Martha's Vineyard, the migrants spent the night in beds at this local church after receiving food at a school cafeteria. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. And President Joe Biden's popularity has improved substantially from his lowest point this summer when gasoline prices peaked and lawmakers appear deadlocked. That's according to a poll from the Associated Press and the Nork Center for Public Affairs Research. Support for Biden recovered from a low of 36 percent in July to 45 percent. The president's approval rating remains underwater with more than half of U.S. adults disapproving of him. The economy continues to be a weakness for Biden. Just 38 percent approve of his economic leadership as the country faces stubbornly high inflation. The Russian and Chinese navies are conducting joint patrols in the Pacific Ocean today. That's ahead of expected face-to-face -face meeting between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Chinese, Chinese President Xi Jinping at a regional summit in southeastern Uzbekistan. Russian officials say the goals of the maneuvers include strengthening naval cooperation between Russia and China. The countries also say they want to protect maritime economic activities between their countries. Time now, 436 and 68 degrees for now. The San Antonio Fire Department saving lives in more ways than one. The program they've started that's become the standard across our country. Plus, a surprise for former Spurs assistant and Las Vegas Aces coach Becky Hammond. She's just one win away from a big title. Fantastic. Checking Trans Guide right now. Let's see how things are looking here as we approach uh, 437. Very good traffic right now, 281 and 410 near the airport. And a quick look outside with live pan. If you haven't stepped outside, it's actually 68 degrees right now. Not too bad. Very nice. We'll be right back. Pro football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys star quarterback Dak Prescott back at the star just a few days after having surgery on his throwing hand to repair a fracture below his thumb. Right now, the Cowboys are going with Cooper Rush and Will Greer and not bringing in another QB. That's because of the optimistic sooner than later return of Prescott, or at least the hope. So why does the team feel like that Rush can run this team for the short haul starting with Cincinnati Sunday? Coop's been here a long time. He's a very smart guy. He knows exactly what's going on. Uh, but there's always kind of that, like, I wonder how we'll do in a, in a game. And uh, I think he kind of showed that last year in the Minnesota game. Came in, did a great job, got a win. And um, so I think everyone's got the, all the confidence in the world in him. I know, I know Dak's got all the confidence in the world in him. So the nice thing is Coop, Coop's very locked into what's going on. He, he's a very smart guy. So um, there's really no difference there. After playing the number one team in the country and almost pulling off the upset of the year in just the second game of the season, the Longhorns have to have got to make sure they don't let UTSA become that trap game even after the 2019 loss to the Longhorns. Uh, the, rather, the Longhorns are getting huge praise from all over college ball from fans and teams alike. Remember, the Horns are down to their third string quarterback in Charles Wright. He only took snaps in one game last year in a blowout of Texas Tech. So head coach Steve Sarkeesian issued this caution as they prepare for the Roadrunners this weekend. To quote uh, my old boss, we got to be careful of the rat poison of, of uh, people telling us how good we are, um, which, which is important. You know, a week ago, everyone told us how bad we were. And now this week, everyone wants to tell us how good we are. And we got to be careful to quiet the noise outside of our building and focus on us, be enamored with us, and focus on our preparation. Kickoff at Royal Memorial Stadium Saturday night. Nostra between UTSA and UT will be at 7 o'clock. KSAT 12 Sports will be there. For me, I always tell my teams the sweetest wins are which ones? The ones on the road. The ones on the road, baby. <laughs> the ones on the road, and that's where you're going. They're the sweetest. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich dropped in on the Vegas Aces locker room Tuesday night after their 85-71 victory over the Connecticut Sun. His protege Becky Hammond just one win away from her first ever WNBA championship and her first season as a WNBA head coach. Game three against the Sun is tonight at 8 o'clock on ESPN. That's awesome. Awesome to see Coach Pop as well. 
Time now, 442 and 68 degrees for now. How a unique program implemented by the San Antonio Fire Department is getting national recognition. And next, why a man convicted for a 1999 murder of his high school ex-girlfriend could soon get a new trial. And welcome back. It's about 4.45 now. A man who was convicted of murdering his girlfriend back in 1999 could get a new trial. ABC's Whit Jocelyn has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's a story that captivated millions in the hit 2014 podcast, Serial. This is a prepaid call from... Adnan Syed. Adnan Syed, convicted for the 1999 murder of his high school ex-girlfriend, Heyman Lee, and sentenced to life behind bars at 17 years old. But this morning, the conviction at the heart of the podcast and later a four-part HBO docuseries serial is being called into question. In new court documents, prosecutors are asking a judge to throw it out and release the now 41-year-old, saying the state no longer has confidence in the integrity of the conviction. They point to a nearly year-long reinvestigation, which uncovered key new evidence. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on this developing story with your GMA First Look. I'm Rhiannon Annali, ABC News, New York. A San Antonio Fire Department program only four years old is now the gold standard across the country. It makes whole blood available on ambulances and at trauma so scenes. Courtney Friedman tells us about the big milestone the department just hit and why that's important to the very first patient. Three years ago, Tiffany Kieschnick was inside this car. I went to the gas station to pick up an IC and ended up having a stroke on my way home and I flipped my car into a ditch. San Antonio EMS had just begun carrying whole blood to trauma scenes to allow for immediate transfusions. Had they not had whole blood on that ambulance, I was not going to make it. Kieschnick was the very first patient to receive whole blood in the field, not just in San Antonio, but in the nation. SAFD created the program. When I came up as a paramedic, the only thing we could do was start IVs. Now now, Fire Chief Charles Hood says his crews have just administered the 1,000th unit of whole blood in the field. This is one of the eight units that carries this whole blood on board. They either can drive this out to a crime or an accident scene, or they can administer it right here in the ambulance. The blood kept in a rigorously tested cooler, keeping the blood viable for the whole 24-hour shift. If you touch it, it's actually kind of cold, right? Uh -huh. So you don't really want to put cold especially this cold into someone's body. All right, so we have a warmer that uh, we use here. The blood will run through the tubing and into the warmer here. SAFD engineers Roy Zamora and Samuel Guzman say the whole process can take just five to ten minutes. I've been in contact with the outside agencies uh, as well as the Department of Defense. We've had some relationships with the military, um, so um, it's really gone global at this point. EMS medic officer Lieutenant William Bullock has taken calls from Austin, Seattle, even New York City asking for training. I'm glad that, you know, my story got out there and it got more people to jump on board. Knowing that she was the first of so many that will be saved. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide right now, looking at Highway 281 and Loop 410. Things are moving, but they're pretty quiet at 448. I didn't see it, but I understand the International Space Station put on quite the show last night, Justin. It did, and I was all excited to show you guys some pictures, but my uh, my iPad that showed some of the pictures, it, well, it's dead right now. but. We're going to get it up and running. We're going to show some pictures later. That's a promise. Uh, yes, it was a sight to see and uh, always beautiful to check it out. Last night was a good flyover. It was it was up there for a, a while. Uh, tonight you'll be able to see it again. It's not as good, but you should be able to see it with mostly clear skies. Visibility starts at about 919, ends around 923. And you're going to look west, northwest, and then it will go to north if you want to check it out. That's later tonight. Uh, if you want to watch the International Space Station go across the sky. Temperatures, and this is the big story this morning. Boy, it feels great out there. 69 degrees at the airport, 61 Kerrville, 64 Hondo, 67 in Pleasanton. And I was looking at some of the intermediate, uh, intermediary numbers, if I can say that right. Uh, we were below 69, we we're down to 68. So officially, I think we're uh, at 68, and that's going to be the coolest temperature uh, since May which is uh, really, really nice. 65 right now, Holotus. It is down to 59, Bernie State, 62, Comfort, uh, 65 in Bulverde. And as we go outside for you right now, 69 degrees again at the airport. Dew point is at 62, calm winds, 
and uh, obviously we don't have a feels like number. We're not going to have a feels like number until probably later this afternoon if uh, we have any at all. And you look at the dew points, we'll see them rise a little bit as we head towards midday and then by the afternoon uh, the dew points will fall off again and uh, it will still feel pretty nice out there. As far as uh, rain chances go with a little bit of uh, humidity back in play today and later this afternoon, there could be one or two pop ups. This is around five o'clock. You see one or two out there. This is going to be east of I-35, so just a 10% chance. And a few of those could work their way towards the I-35 corridor by this evening. Nothing too much to worry about. I think it'll be few and far between. And this will be the setup next couple days where we see some of those stray showers or storms. But it is not important rain. 68 degrees at 7 o'clock by 11 a.m. 82. And then we'll be up around 93 this afternoon with that small chance for a shower or storm. Wind should be pretty light today out of the southeast. Here's a water vapor image, and you can see where you have some pockets of dry air here to our east, to our west. We're kind of caught in the middle right now, which is why we have some of those small rain chances. But high pressure does begin to build in from the west, and this sort of takes over the forecast. And it will sit over us as we get into early next week. Not good. That's the, kind of that summer heat high. Same idea. With this over us, we're going to see some warm temperatures and really pretty dry conditions. And this goes through Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Uh, we officially go in the fall by Friday of next week, but it's probably not going to feel like it. High temperatures will be above average each and every day, especially next week. We average about 89 this time of year. We're going to be in the mid 90s for highs. Very quickly, let's take you out to the tropics. Here is uh, Tropical Storm Fiona winds right now at 50 miles per hour gusting to 60. This is going to move towards Puerto Rico and we think eventually Haiti. Now the kind of the change here in the forecast is now looks like this is going to take a turn to the north, which pretty much guarantees this will not come into the Gulf of Mexico. We'll still watch it, but I think this is going to be more uh, of an Atlantic storm uh, and staying uh, well east of us. Few coastal showers, 10% chance of rain through Saturday, 94 Sunday, and then uh, you've got the 96 Tuesday, 95 on Wednesday. So a hot forecast, guys, and really pretty summer-like. Nothing that uh, is anything. There's nothing there to get too excited about. Mother Nature saw the calendar. She sees autumn is about to start, so she's like, no, no, we're not done. She's toyed with us a lot this year. She has, lot. yes, yes. She's very, I think she was a psych major in college. <laughs> <I've been. laughs> mm -hmm. Reverse psychology yeah, major. Yeah. For sure. But at least this morning's <laughs> nice, like right now. It really <laughs> is. This is true. Yeah. Thank you, guys. 452, 68 degrees. Actor John Samos becoming an author, plus a new movie has a familiar vibe for fans of The Breakfast Club. A new film starring Anthony Michael Hall has something familiar about it. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Matt Wolf. Against my wishes, you've all been given a second chance. So if you blow it, you will all be in summer school. There's Anthony Michael Hall in the class, playing a teacher, reluctantly watching over a group of high school students. Now, if that has a familiar ring, it should. The movie is a direct nod to The Breakfast Club, the John Hughes classic which Hall starred in way back in 1985. This time around, though, Hall assumes a more seasoned role. Along with Debbie Gibson co-starring, he told me John Hughes would have been happy with this new take and that The Breakfast Club still makes the cut after 37 years. I've had a long time to think about the effect of The Breakfast Club and why did it work. And I think in large part, it's like group therapy for people. The glass is in select theaters now and on demand. There is no possibility of my forgiving you. The question is, how on earth can you forgive yourself? As the world remembers and honors the life of Queen Elizabeth, season one of Netflix's royal drama, The Crown, has re-entered the streamer's top 10. Netflix says viewership is up 800%. Now, production on the latest season of The Crown on pause due to the Queen's passing. Michelle, wouldn't you rather have an Elvis party? We all know John Stamos, the actor. Now we'll get a chance to know John Stamos as the author. Henry Holt Publishing announcing Stamos will pen his memoir titled If You Would Have Told Me, and it's set for release next fall. His experiences as a father and the sudden loss of his friend and Full House co-star Bob Saget earlier this year convinced Stamos the time was right for the project. And happy birthday, Tommy Lee Jones. He's 76 Thursday. Matt Wolf, ABC News.
and the time now is 456 and 68 degrees for now. Thousands of mourners are in line as we speak for the opportunity to say a final goodbye to Queen Elizabeth. What's next as the country and the world remembers her as she now lies in state. And why a community southwest of San Antonio is still dealing with lack of water and why it's taking so long to repair that problem. Trans guy, no problems to report right now. Steven is in studio right now and we'll talk to him coming up at the top of the hour. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Thousands lining up to see the queen lying in state. I'm Inez de la in London and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at a nice 69 degrees. It was really pretty walking outside this morning. And good morning to you. It is Thursday, September 15th, and it is kind of a nice morning out there yet again. Yeah, it kind of feels like fall for now, but we can't get too excited because the afternoon is going to change. It is, and it got quite warm again yesterday. Justin is in for Mike and has more. Right? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Oh, the camera's moving. That's what's happening. <laughs> okay. I here it comes. Give me a tour of the studio. Wave, Kevin. Uh, there's Justin. Aww. Hi. Uh, yeah, that was my green wall. Wasn't that cool? <laughs> yes, Very it was. nice. Very well, nice. Uh, good morning. And yes, uh, we're going to bring in the bus this morning. If you're heading out to the bus stop, it's a it's a cool morning. Temperatures are in the 60s uh, right now, and I think we drop a couple more degrees before it's all said and done. Is it light jacket weather? You decide. It's a close call, but some of the kids may want a light jacket this morning with uh, light winds out there as well. By the time we get to the afternoon and school's letting out, it'll be plenty warm. You can definitely lose the jacket. It's 93, the high temperature uh, today, uh, very similar to yesterday. Look at the numbers right now. It is 68 here in San Antonio. How nice does that feel? 65 in New Braunfels, 64 Uvalde, 72 Carrizo Springs, 70 in Catua, and around the Bear County. Mostly 60s, although Stinson's still reporting 71 at this hour. Bernie Stage, I'll point out is at 59 right now. It's been a while since we've seen numbers like that. So let's get you out the door this morning. Well, we start off in the 60s, but uh, we should be up in the low 70s by 8 o'clock, 78, 10 o'clock. Noontime, we're at 86, and there are those high temperatures in the 90s today. And we can't rule out a stray shower or storm, although it's unlikely. 10% chance of rain. Some small rain chances continue into the weekend. We'll look at the weekend forecast here in just a few minutes, but Let's go to the roadways now. Are they getting busy yet, Stephen? You know, I wouldn't say they're busy this early, Justin, but we definitely are already seeing those flashing lights out there. So let's check it out. 410 at Gulebna. We have talked about this spot many a times here on GMSA, but if you travel through this spot, you know that there's also an area where we see a lot of active construction that takes place. This is that particular incident right now that we're seeing on the Transguide camera. We are seeing that road work that should be wrapping up hopefully within the next hour or so, but watch out for those crews out there. It's still pretty dark dark outside, so just make sure that you keep your eyes on the road, both hands on the wheel. Taking it to the map, though, no other slowdowns to report at this hour in the morning, so that's some good news. If you plan on heading out, perfect time to take advantage of these quiet roadways and obviously great weather that we're having at this early. But let's go ahead and check those travel times because no delays here either. 25 minutes that journey from Bernie on I-10 eastbound. 27 if you are traveling down 281 southbound heading in from Bolverde and your drive time from I-35 southbound coming in from New Braunfels looks to to be about 25 minutes. So I would say that you could take your time if you plan on traveling into San Antonio within the next few minutes or so. Enjoy your breakfast at home, but watch out again for this road work taking place here at 410 Gulebra. We'll watch it closely and hopefully have a better update in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Thank you, sir. Natalie breaking news a knock on their door this morning. It had San Antonio firefighters springing into action. They helped a man who had been shot nearby. It happened at Calabra Road and Zarzamora. Katrina Weber is there live and tells us why those first responders were worried that they also might need help. Well, good morning. Now, this is the fire station where that shooting victim showed up about 4 o'clock this morning. Firefighters told police while they were tending to him here, they heard more gunshots and they were concerned that someone might be shooting at them. Now, no one in the fire station hit, but that man was shot. And it happened over here across the street behind this Dollar Tree store. Police still have a scene set up there, but I can give you a better look at it with the video that we have. Now, uh, police swarmed this area because they were investigating the possibility that someone was shooting at the fire station as well as that man, uh, but they did not find any evidence of this building being hit. However, they did investigate the shooting. They say they found shell casings and a blood trail 
on the street behind this Dollar Tree at Zarzamora and Culebra. And so they had roped off that area as they uh, searched it for more evidence. But there are a lot of people who are sleeping outside the store, and so police were able to question some of them. They did get some information about possible suspects that uh, the shooter possibly may have been in a car with two other people. But as far as we know, they have not made any arrests yet. The man who was shot was taken to a hospital by ambulance. Police told us he's in his 20s to 30s and that he was stable as he left for the hospital. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. New this morning, Bear County Sheriff's Office is hoping you can help them track down a man wanted for breaking into a local eye clinic and getting away with over $30,000 worth of merchandise. Camelia Juarez is following the story and takes a closer look at the suspect. Mark Stephanie, deputies say he used a hammer to break into a Bernie Vision Center in a Fair Oaks shopping center. Here's a look at the suspect and the van he took off in. These pictures captured at the scene when it happened earlier this month. Deputies say the suspect was able to shatter the glass of the store with a hammer before breaking inside with the largest storage tub, packing inside at least 30,000 in merchandise. We're told after everything was loaded up, he took off in a white Ford Econoline cargo van with no front license plate. If you have any information about where he may be, you can call the Bear County Sheriff's Office number on your screen. You can also email tips at bcso.org. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. And this morning, San Antonio police continue to try and convince a man who barricaded himself inside a southeast side mobile home on Tuesday to surrender. The 28 year old man was believed to be armed and according to a preliminary police report, officers were initially responding to a call about a mental health concern. A public information officer on the scene on Tuesday night said the man had been acting erratically, throwing bottles around and shooting at his own dog. Now, police said no one was hit by that gunfire, but they called in a SWAT team and negotiators to take over that situation. Some adjustments made to San Antonio City's budget proposal. Council will take up a final vote later today. That includes more money for the MLK March, more funds for sidewalk repair and extending the city pool season. We're still waiting to see what council will do with the $50 million in extra CPS energy revenue coming in. Many of the members of the council did not seem to support the plan to send rebates to customers. It has been more than a month and people living in the community of Derby are still without running water. Now, since then, donations of bottled water have been delivered, but those who live there worry it will not last until water well repairs are made. Rio County Judge Arnulfo Luna tells us they already hit their budget for hauling tanks of water to Derby. That water is supposed to be for utilities. The judge adds they can still provide bottled drinking water. What we were told is that water was only provided to residents there for the first two weeks. It could be. Uh, what happened after the first yeah. two weeks? That I couldn't tell you. Now the county judge says if residents run out, all they have to do is call the county and they will send more. We also spoke to the owner of Derby ING, the water company. He still does not have a timeline for when repairs when that will be finished, both the Texas Center for Environmental Quality and Texas Water Development Board say they are working with the company to get the repairs expedited. And taking a live look right now at Westminster Hall in London this morning, that's where members of the public are lining up to say goodbye to their beloved queen. And Britain's longest serving monarch will lie in state until Monday. As you see, you saw the line, so waiting to see the queen's coffin expected to take hours. Uh, as ABC's uh, Inez de la Quatera reports, authorities say nearly a million people will still try to pay their respects. Through the night, thousands lining up outside of Westminster Hall, where Queen Elizabeth II now lies in state. Inside it was amazing. It was really quiet and uh, yeah, you just couldn't help but feel emotional. The queue snaking along the River Thames and over Lambeth Bridge, nearly three miles long at one point. Inside, some pausing for a moment, others bowing to the monarch. For many people, they just want to be part of history. I think no matter how you feel about the monarchy in the UK, there is a love and adoration for the Queen. And so for everyone who has the chance, they do want to go there and show their respects. <laughs> The Queen brought to this resting place in a solemn 38-minute procession. 
thousands of well-wishers coming to watch as her coffin was carried over from Buckingham Palace on a horse-drawn carriage draped in the royal standard and topped with the imperial state crown. I was five when the Queen became Queen and she has been the mainstay and the constant in my life. I'm now 75 and I just thought I should mark her passing. The Queen's family following the coffin, King Charles flanked by his siblings, Princess Anne, Prince Andrew, and Prince Edward. And in a show of unity, Princes William and Harry side by side. The crowd spontaneously breaking into applause as minute guns were fired and the bells of Big Ben tolled. And the Queen's state funeral will be held on Monday at Westminster Abbey. Her coffin will then be brought in a procession to St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, her final resting place. In de la Quatera, ABC News, London. 510, 68 degrees. And coming up, we're going to tell you why California is suing Amazon and what it means for customers everywhere. And how a special nonprofit is helping the community of Uvalde move forward after their tragedy. And taking a look outside with live cam, enjoy this temporary niceness. It's 68 degrees for now, but things will warm up later on this afternoon and it'll feel like fall in San Antonio. We'll be right back. Just about 514 on your Thursday morning. It's a community that has lived through tragedy. And now a nonprofit is hoping to help Uvalde with healing by building a custom playground. The mock-up of the playground was designed by the community and families of the Robb Elementary victims. It will go in De Leon Park and the current wooden equipment will be torn down by the city. It will be built by Kaboom, a national nonprofit that aims to bring play equipment to underserved communities. Certainly when we're able to see the joy of people coming together, um, that plays a role in us seeing something, you know, kind of the life that's here. It plays a role in healing. So our hope is that it can play a small part in helping the community heal. And work on the park will start October 13th and be finished on October 15th. All of this is being done by hand. So they need 250 volunteers if you want to help. We have a link to sign up on our website at kset.com. Good things coming to you, Valdi. 514, 68 degrees. How Zoom is looking to expand beyond its traditional video meetings. Now that demands are changing. Plus, we'll tell you about an online game that's popular and will be free to play. innovator in all of us. That's why we build technology that makes it possible for every business and every person to come to the table and do more incredible things. Dude, you coming? Mm. Alka-Seltzer Plus Power Max Gels Cold and Flu Relief with more concentrated power. Because the only thing dripping should be your style. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz, Winter Warriors with Alka-Seltzer Plus. This is your last chance to win seven grand a week for life from Publishers Clearinghouse. So what are you waiting for? Enter at PCH.com. October 31st, you could win seven grand a week for life. Last chance. Enter at PCH.com. Today's Tech Bites, California takes Amazon to court. The state is accusing the retail giant of antitrust violations, claiming Amazon is stifling consumer choice, which leads to higher prices. California wants Amazon to stop making deals with sellers that reduce competition. Amazon is vowing to fight the lawsuit. Zoom may be looking to reach beyond video calling. The company reportedly has email and calendar apps in the works. They could be rolled out as early as this November. Finally, The Sims 4 for free. Starting on October 18th, the publisher of Sims will not charge players to download the base game on a Mac, PC, or several gaming consoles, but those playing the life simulation game for free will still miss out on some features. By the way, I hear playing The Sims is a great way to build character. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. <laughs> he tried. <laughs> Mark's I've, I've like, got, no, I've got no, nothing no. today. It's
I like Andrew, I just, I don't have anything. Yeah. That's probably a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> we'll keep it there. 519, let's go ahead and check in with Steven. <laughs> That's okay, we can try again tomorrow if he's doing Tech Bytes. So there's mm -hmm. always that chance that he's gonna make us giggle here. All right, let's get a look here at traffic because we're all smiles as well. As you can see, 410 at Culebra, uh, that construction we talked about earlier, it's already cleared out, so that's some good news. But as we take a drive around town, 1604 at Spurs Ranch, it is uh, pretty quiet out this early in the morning. Wasn't as busy as Justin Horn, who was filling in for me yesterday. I know you had a pretty busy day out on the roadways, so mm -hmm. I hate to brag, but I have it pretty easy this morning. So as we gave you a look at the airport, it's a good commute right now. But we want to take you to that construction that we talked about earlier. We do have a few more days to go of it. What we're seeing out there is some pavement work. So that will uh, continue up until September 27th. So we still have, obviously, about a week and a half, to, uh, two weeks to go, a little less than that. But starts at 7 in the evening, should wrap at 5 in the morning. And it does look like crews moved out of there around that time. Alternating main lane closures in both directions from Ingram Road to US 90. But you know where to find that information, ksat.com slash traffic. Scroll to the bottom of the page. There's a full list of closures there. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, Justin was so busy yesterday with yeah. uh, weather and yes. traffic that yeah. we at one point considered bringing a porta potty to the studio. <laughs> uh, but we never had to resort to that. No, that's well, a good thing. He got I a break you. eventually. I did get my steps in. I think I was going back. Yes, yes. you did. Yes. It was good. It was good. It was all right. Uh, and I'm glad today is is quiet. <laughs> it is also beautiful. I mean, you go outside, it feels so great out there. Temperatures have fallen into the upper 60s, 68 degrees at the airport right now, 71 stints and 68 Kelly. 65 in Randolph, and we've got a light northwesterly wind right now. Uh, so if you have an opportunity, go outside, enjoy it, because it's only going to last a little while here. Once that sun comes up, we'll get those temperatures really jumping up. Now, dew points tell the story here because we've got a lot of good moist air right along the coast, and dew points are in the 60s and 70s there, and this is trying to spread towards uh, San Antonio in the I-35 corridors. Getting to the hill country, we've still got some fairly dry air, but elsewhere, dew points are trying to rise some and that'll keep temperatures from getting too, too low. But again, at the moment, 68 degrees at the airport, 64 Hondo, 66 in Pleasanton, 65 in New Braunfels and around Bear County, generally uh, mid to upper 60s with a stints in the outlier there uh, sitting at 71. Hey, maybe you're doing some running this morning. Uh, well, it's no surprise that this is good running weather all the way through. I'd say about 10 o'clock. It's 11 a.m. where we start to rise into the 80s and running may not be as fun. But I, I'm, you know, I, I've seen people running throughout the summer. So this is really good stuff. Uh, it's uh, not as bad as it could be. Forecast for today. We're expecting uh, quiet conditions through midday and then by the afternoon. There will be some showers along the coast, and I think a few of those try to make a run for I-35 in the San Antonio area by, say, 5, 6 o'clock. It's going to be... A, one or two straight showers. That's it. I don't expect much on the radar, and that'll last through about seven to eight o'clock. This model does show one or two showers making their way towards San Antonio by that hour, but after that, uh, rain chances go away, and we're going to see a similar setup next few days. Case that 12-hour forecast: 72 by 8 a.m., 86 by noon time, and then we start to get into the 90s this afternoon. 93 at four o'clock, 10 percent chance of rain. And we'll call it partly cloudy. I think we start off mostly sunny, end up partly cloudy. Here's a big picture across the country and there's really nothing remarkable here. We've got some showers and a few storms up across Nebraska, a few showers in the Gulf of Mexico, but for this time of year, this is really a pretty quiet weather pattern. One of the reasons for that, ridge high pressure is starting to build back in. You remember this thing? We hated it during the summer. Now it's making a return. Uh, it's going to sit over top of us starting, I'd say late Sunday, but more so into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. With this over top of us, uh, you know what that means, dry and hot. We're going to see those temperatures start to jump up above average, I think, by uh, next week. So the seven-day forecast, 93 tomorrow, 93 Saturday, very consistent next few days. Just a 10% chance of rain, partly cloudy in the afternoon. 94 Sunday, 95 Monday, 96 Tuesday. We'll see how warm we go. The records, by the way, are triple digits Monday and Tuesday, so I don't think it's record territory, but it is going to be hot nonetheless, and humidity will be back too. And just beyond that seven-day forecast, Thursday of next week is when we officially go into fall, if you were curious. Oh, officially. Well, that's good. Officially. Yeah, which is just another day here in South Texas. Yeah, I mean, we don't really celebrate that till you know, like November around here. <laughs> right. That's yeah. true. Well, we'll take what we can get. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Justin. Thank yeah. you for the truth bomb. 523, <laughs> 68 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Stranger Things and Marvel star David Harbour talks about his new movie, Gran Turismo.
526, now to a first look at a new racing movie inspired by a popular video game series. CNN's David Daniel has more in today's Hollywood Minute. I'm always trying to watch and, and interested in certain art movies, but always trying to get into the art. And really, at the end of the day, I, I love a good comic book movie. So. David Harbour, the Red Guardian himself from Black Widow and the upcoming Thunderbolts, is getting revved up for the latest video game franchise to be turned into a movie. Harbour is set to star in Gran Turismo, an adaptation of the video game racing series that sold more than 80 million copies worldwide. Neil Blomkamp, director of District 9, and Elysium has signed on to direct. Gran Turismo speeds into theaters next August. We're looking for someone with X Factor. It has to be me. It's definitely her. Mia Goth stars in the new horror movie Pearl, a prequel to X, which came out in March. And it turns out she's getting a trilogy. A24 has greenlit a third film in the horror franchise, with Goth's character heading to Hollywood in the 1980s. The title, Maxine with three X's. Guess what kind of movies she's looking to make. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Okay, 527, 68 degrees. And still ahead, how a new dentistry program by UT Health is being developed to help special needs families. And which of your childhood toys will make it into the Toy Hall of Fame? How you can help decide. Big news overnight, a tentative agreement reached on that looming rail strike that could have paralyzed the country starting tomorrow. However, this isn't the only labor shortage threatening our economy. And taking a look outside with live cam, it feels like fall for now. We're at 68 degrees and we will enjoy that. Fall here, right? right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Real fall in other places. Right. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's 531 on your Thursday. It is September 15th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far and enjoy these small little breaks early in the morning. Justin is in for Mike and has more on that. Yeah, the leaves aren't turning colors yet, but uh, it does feel a little crisper outside. Temperatures have fallen down into the upper 60s here in San Antonio, 68 degrees, and we have noticed a few 50s on the map. It's been a while since May since we've seen temperatures like this. So it uh, does feel different outside. 65 New Braunfels, 61 Kerrville, 64 right now in Uvalde and around Bear County, seeing mid to upper 60s with some low 70s down at Stenson. Uh, forecast air quality today, it's another ozone action day. And this is our third day in a row where we may see some unhealthy air when it comes to ozone levels. So for those who are sensitive to that kind of thing, heads up, uh, it is another one of those days. And as we look at the weather headlines, uh, we are looking at uh, mostly clear skies at the moment and the International Space Station flew over the area last night. We've got some pictures to show you and we'll talk about when our next opportunity to check that out will be. Plus, uh, summer's back. Yeah, it feels good right now, but above average heat heads our way next uh, few days and really as we get into next week. And what about Tropical Storm Fiona? It's out there. Where is she headed? We have the latest on that too coming up in just a bit. For the latest on your morning commute, we check in with our friend Stephen Cavazos. How are things going now? Hey, good morning, Justin. You know, I was actually tempted to drive with the windows down this morning, but I think it probably would have led to bad hair day. Uh, thankfully, traffic isn't looking bad at all. We take a look there at 281 at Evans. You can see it's just getting a little bit busier. In fact, a lot busier than we expected because typically at this time, the roads are pretty quiet, but you can see the commute is already getting going there. 1604 at Spurs Ranch. We meant this, mentioned this a little while ago. It was obviously a very busy day on the roadways yesterday. Right now, different story, but still drive safe out there because there is some active construction till, still taking place. We take you to the map and no other issues to report right now. Just a lot of those road closures you can expect to see in and around the Alamo City. I'll be updating you in the next few minutes on that, but right now the destination to San Antonio is not looking bad at all. Everything looks pretty usual there, especially pretty pleasant on I-37 if you're traveling in from Pleasanton. 28 minutes to the downtown area and it's half an hour if you're traveling in 90 from Highway 90, pardon me, in the eastbound lanes heading in from Castroville. And the arrival from Lytle looks like it's going to be about 17 minutes if you travel on I-35 northbound. So again, no worries, even though the commute is picking up, we're not seeing delays just yet. Of course, we're going to watch the roads closely, have those updates in the next few minutes. Mark Stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Updating late breaking news, San Antonio police say a shooting on the west side this morning may be related to a drug deal. That is one possibility they're exploring. The man who was shot ran to a nearby fire station for help at the corner of Culebra Road and Zarzamora. Katrina Weber is live in that area, and Katrina, we understand police have some information on the shooter. 
That's some pretty vague information. Uh, they say that they were told that the shots were fired from a car that contained two men and a woman. That's about all they know. Uh, but they say they have reason to believe this may have stemmed from a drug deal. What they know for sure is that this is the area where the shooting happened. They say they found shell casings here on the street, uh, as well as some blood. And in fact, we have seen a trail of blood that leads all the way down the sidewalk here, going to the fire station across the street. Let me give you a look at the video so you can see uh, how things were a little bit earlier. This happened right after four o'clock. Police flooded this area for more than one reason. There was a man shot, but they also had reports that some of the shots may have been aimed at the fire station where the victim went for help. Uh, police did investigate that. They said they found no sign that the fire station was hit. No one in the fire station was harmed by any gunfire, but they were worried for a while that some of the shots were aimed in their direction. Uh, that man who was shot, though, was taken to a hospital. We understand he was shot in his belly area. They say he was stable as he left. He's in his 20s or 30s. And again, police say that this possibly could be tied to some sort of a drug deal, but they are fully investigating this case and still Still looking for the shooter. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, President Biden says a tentative railway labor agreement has been reached, averting a potentially devastating strike before the pivotal midterm elections. However, as CNN's Amy Kiley reports, gas and food prices could soon spike again anyway. Even averting a massive rail strike won't stop the threat of similar economic disruptions tied to labor issues. Amtrak changed its schedule to avoid its trains getting stuck if a strike led to freight trains abandoned on the tracks. Norfolk Southern and other railroads are taking similar steps with freight. We don't know uh, if we're going to get more containers. We don't know if they're going to come and get this train. Notably, rail workers weren't just asking for more money. They focused on more time off, as labor shortages there and elsewhere strain industries crucial to the economy. There are also uh, very tense negotiations over the West Coast ports, which could throw another wrench into supply chains. Some recent United Steelworkers negotiations have been tense. Across the country, various teachers unions have been striking. They were uh, striking for some better pay which teachers do deserve. They teach us and they work really hard for it. Some nurses have been walking off the job and thousands of Delta Airline pilots picketed before Labor Day weekend. Such tension threatens the economy, including health care and education. It also leaves the White House in a precarious position. Biden has said he is the most pro-union president in history. He has also said that confronting inflation and supply chain issues is his number one economic priority. What happens when those two objectives are in tension? I may be kindly reporting. Two men accused of killing a Houston police officer have waived their rights to future bond hearings. That means 20 year old Asim Taylor and Jalen Womack will likely stay behind bars until their trial. Bonds have become critical issues in the case because both men were out on $75,000 bonds for previous murder charges when Omar Ureen was shot. The 37-year-old off-duty officer was killed while on his way home from picking up food for his family. And Chick-fil-A employees are known for their willingness to help. And in one case in Florida, an employee even stepped in to stop a carjacking. This happened just east of Pensacola. And police say a 43-year-old man approached a woman as she was getting her baby out of her car near Chick-fil-A and grabbed her keys from her. Now, Chick-fil-A employee Michael Gordon ran over after the woman screamed for help. Gordon fought the would-be carjacker to the ground. Now, police say other people ran over to help, and the man was caught and charged with carjacking with a weapon and battery. The Chick-fil-A employee, Michael Gordon, was not seriously injured. President Biden in Detroit yesterday to tour the Detroit Auto Show and deliver remarks on the electric vehicle manufacturing boom. The president announced the U.S. is planning on spending $900 million on new electric vehicle charging stations. During the visit, the president also got to drive a variety of new vehicles. Come on, jump in and give you a ride to Washington. Come on, we're ready. Does that make a word? Uber ride? That's an Uber. What do you think, Mr. President? I'll tell you what. Let him drive it off. Watch out. Head of my Secret Service detail, I'm driving to <laughs> They're not okay with that. <laughs> the money is part of a new bipartisan infrastructure law that will help build charging locations across 53,000 miles of the U.S. highway system. 
The White House says the investment will create more jobs, help with climate change, and position the U.S. to lead the future of electric vehicles. Time now, 539 and 68 degrees for now. Some of the greatest toys ever made could soon make it to the Toy Hall of Fame. How you can get involved to find out which ones make it. And the UT School of Dentistry is set to offer a unique service to special needs patients. We're going to tell you when it's set to open. South Texans are smiling this morning, 68 degrees. Hey, we'll take it for mid-September, right? You're watching GMSA. More to come. Stick around. We'll be right back. Just about 542, exciting news for families with adults or children with complex medical needs. The UT Health San Antonio School of Dentistry is set to open a clinic tailored for special needs patients. Now, it's part of a private donation and a $2 million federal five-year grant. The clinic is set to open in early 2024. Dr. Peter Loomer says finding specialty care is difficult for all families regardless of insurance. The goal behind this new clinic is to provide quality care for the special needs community and train future health providers. If you have a special needs child, they may not be able to express the fact that they have a toothache the same way uh, uh, another child would. So it's important to really that they have know about this resource and have access. I'm hoping that you know having this this clinic here will keep it all together in one place, so that we're not running for surgery to one place, coming and seeing the doctor in another place. An estimated 50,000 patients are expected to be served once the clinic is at full capacity. It's now 543, still 68 degrees. And it is Thursday, and that means it is time to visit the San Antonio Humane Society. We're going to introduce you to this week's cute pet next. We have got a sweet little baby right here. Lucy's here from the San Antonio Humane Society. Who is this girl? Oh, hello. Okay, <laughs> this energetic girl is Hi. Fluffy. She is our six-month-old retriever mix girl. Yes, and she Hi. is a queen because she's our longest pet resident right now. She mm -hmm. just celebrated 100 days at the shelter. Mm -hmm. So we really want to help her find her forever home. You know, six months old, a, obviously a ton of puppy, um, but she already knows how to sit on command yes, she does. right now. And one of those dogs where if you just work with her, she is going to learn an encyclopedia of stuff. And boy, <laughs> what a friend to play with. Come here, mama. Running partner, walking partner. Yeah, you're just as sweet as, yeah, she's sweet as can be. She so. wants to explore everything. Yes, you she do. wants to make friends. Because you're a puppy, aren't you? <laughs> yes, indeed. So what y'all got going on there? Oops, your leash is all. Oh, there we go, there we go okay. girl. What's yeah, going on? So we have our, uh, we just opened up our El Rey Fido 2023 competition. Again, already? already, yes. So we're very excited. We want uh, people, you know, if you have a pup at home who wants to be mm -hmm. royalty, fiesta famous, to please sign up. It's early, but I think the sooner the, the better because that way you raise more funds and you get to win the crown. Would you like to wear a crown? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all the information, you can sign up now on our website at sahumane.org slash ERF. Except the crown would clash with her pearl necklace. So. I know. Anyway, if you'd like more information <laughs> on El Rey Fido, yes, we're talking about that already, or Fluffy. What a great, great dog. Go over there to 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. And in your morning consumer headlines, there's a viral menu hack on TikTok that allows you to get a Chipotle burrito for cheap. However, Chipotle got a wind of it and has now put a stop to it. The TikTok trend began circulating back in July and it showed a way to order through the Chipotle app. A single soft taco with all the toppings and the tortilla on the side for just $3. All the individual ingredients could then be put together to make a regular size burrito, which typically costs about nine or 10 bucks. The TikTok video has been viewed more than two and a half million times. A Chipotle official said in a statement that a single taco with all those toppings on the site can no longer be ordered online. Lightbright, Nerf, and Pound Puppies are among the dozen National Toy Hall of Fame finalists for 2022. I don't know all these, so here we go. The others are Bingo, Briar Horses, Catan, never heard of that one, Masters of the Universe, Piñata, Phase 10, Racco, Spirograph, and The Top. Some of these are really old wow. school. Uh, you remember Spirograph? Yeah, I it's do. Kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, Hall of Fame at the uh, Strong National Museum of Play in Rochester, New York. Uh, an advisory committee will select three inductees. The public can also vote online through September 21st. The public will collectively vote as one member of the committee with the three toys to get the most public votes submitted on one ballot. Oh, look at pound puppies in the video. 
I remember that. I don't. What, what, so what is Catan? Anybody recognize that? I, I don't remember that one. Board was it a board game? Board okay, game. gotcha. They still yeah. have. Well, I mean, the picture doesn't look the same. They still <laughs> sell light brights. Right. Out there. I'm yeah. not surprised. <laughs> that was a hit back in the day. They're they're still fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 549, 68 degrees. Good check with Steven. I, I, I stand with you, Steph. They're very fun. I mean, I think they were also f uh, featured in an episode of Stranger Things the last season. So. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with it, obviously they're making their way back into the forefront there. But uh, right now, let's get a look at traffic because things are also looking great here. 35 and 37, it's just getting busier out there. There's I-10 at Callahan. I drove by there a little bit earlier this morning heading into work, and it was a quiet commute. But now, different story there at 10 at Presley. You can see there's just a lot more folks waking up with us, getting their morning started early, and of course, hopefully, they're going to grab their cup of coffee or breakfast taco. But taking you to the map, uh, things have been quite quiet for a little while now until we saw this crash that popped up here. That's off of 35, so it's not on the main highway. I'm not too concerned about it right now, but I'll find out what exactly what the conditions look like and if it's something that drivers need to be on the lookout for. But regardless, uh, you should always watch for those first responders out there and make sure that you plan your commute ahead of time, especially here off US 181 in Bear County. We're talking about that bridge work. It's been current for a while, but we have a few more days to go of it, so be patient. It's nine in the evening to five in the morning. It's during that time alternating lane closures in both directions from the Wilson County line to I-37, but you know where to find that information. Of course, on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. But right now, traffic just getting busier, but I wouldn't say that it's bad just yet. Guys. Hmm. That's good news. Yeah. You know, uh, I would add the... Um you know the little thing you used to look through and you like push the button and it would oh, like, oh yeah 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 was oh, it yeah. Uh, the, the viewmaster something like that yeah, yeah. The, was it the GAF viewmaster with the little circular yes. pictures yeah. yes yes I believe cool. I think and that Teddy was it. Show. anyways sure. we could go on uh, <laughs> but I want to show you a picture in our case at connect I know you can't see much here and you may not actually be able to see it at all but right there Kind of a bright light, not a light bright, but a bright light <laughs> uh, here on our case of Connect. Uh, it, this, it is hard to see, uh, but we you trust you. It. It's I, there. I, I uh, see it from here. <laughs> I had to walk up a little uh, bit. Yeah, I should have thought this out better, but uh, <laughs> we appreciate all the pictures and videos you did send in of the International Space Station. That's what I'm looking at if you can't see it. Uh, this was uh, sent in last night, and you can see the flyover. Uh, there will actually be another opportunity tonight. Now, it's not as good as it was last night, but it is there if you want to check it out. And we should have mostly clear skies again. It's going to start in the west-northwest and then go to the north. It'll start at 919 and end about 923 if you want to check it out tonight with uh, mostly clear skies. Always cool to see. Also, be nice if we could get a cold front, right? Let's talk about the average fat first front. Now, this is kind of a, a vague thing here because uh, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly what you consider a good fall front would be. But we're going to call it uh, 10 degrees temperature drop. That would be our definition of a front. And in 2019, we got our first front about October 11th. Uh, 2018 and 2022, just last year, was September 22nd. 2020, it was September 4th, so it was pretty early that year. And we averaged all of this out. Our first fronts, our first good front is usually late September. We still don't see it in the forecast. And it can be as late as October, but that's what, when we average. And hopefully, hopefully we'll get one here soon that brings in some good dry air and cools us down. It does feel nice this morning, but this is not courtesy of a front. This is just some slightly drier air that worked in yesterday that's allowing temperatures to drop a little bit. 68 degrees at the airport, 65 New Braunfels. Mid 60s around Holotus. It's still 71 though. It's Denson, and the cool spot this morning continues to be Comfort and Bernie Stage down to 59 this morning. Pretty incredible. As we go outside for you right now, 68 degrees at the airport. That's the coolest reading we've had since May. 68 at Kelly, as we said, and 65 at Randolph. Dew point trend. Dew points are fairly low this morning. They do rise some and then fall off a little bit this afternoon. So we will see some moisture midday and there's probably enough humidity there and enough moisture to get a few showers and storms going. We'll call for about a 10% chance of rain. Most of that's going to be along the coast, but a few showers may make a run for I-35 later this afternoon and this evening. This is around 8 o'clock. This model does show one or two showers popping up around San Antonio, so we can't rule it out. But anything that develops will be short-lived and likely won't put down all that much rain. 72, 8 o'clock, 82 by 11 a.m., 86 noon time. Partly cloudy and 10% chance of rain, 93 by this afternoon with light southeasterly winds. High pressure begins to build in as we head towards uh, the latter part of the weekend and early next week, and that means more heat. And really, we take rain chances almost completely out of the forecast. So it's almost a return to summer 
for much of next week, unfortunately. Uh, the, again, there's nothing there that tells us we're going to get a good front coming through here. Uh, meantime, in the tropics, Tropical Storm Fiona has winds at 50 miles per hour. This is forecast to move across the Lesser Antilles towards Puerto Rico and then probably start to make a turn off to the north. And uh, this means chances are this is not going to have any effect on Texas, uh, but could affect the East Coast in some way. We'll see. Uh, time will tell. 93 Friday, 93 Saturday, small chances of rain and then warm temperatures coming up next week. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on a Thursday, breaking news. The strike has been averted. That devastating rail strike that was potentially going to happen went down to the wire. Tens of thousands of workers almost walked off the job. But then President Biden announced a tentative railway labor agreement has been reached. We're going to have the latest on what it means for all of us, including travel, right here on GMA. If you're getting ready for the Halloween season, here's something to consider. You can watch horror movies in a haunted house setting here in San Antonio. The Terror High Film Festival will be happening at Rolling Oak Small. We have all you need to know right now over at KSAT.com. Why the mayor of Uvalde is hoping an app will make people feel safer in that community following the Robb Elementary School shooting. That's coming up here on GMSA. San Antonio police investigating after a man was shot over on the city's west side this morning. What SAPD is saying about suspects and trans guy. We've got a few more of you on the roads this morning at 281 at Evans. Other highways are a little bit busier. There's 410 at Calabria. We'll talk to Stephen coming up. A local eye clinic is out of $30,000 after a burglary. Coming up on GMSA, how you can help. Thousands lining up to see the queen lying in state. I'm Inez de la in London, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Surprise, surprise, we're at 68 degrees. That's very nice for right now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Because right now is mid-September in South Texas. Yeah, we'll definitely take it. Good morning, everybody. Rise and shine. It's Thursday, the 15th. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a good week so far. Uh, we love the 68 degrees for right now, even though we know it's going to warm up just a little bit in the it, afternoon. It, it really does start to warm up, say, around noon, 1 o'clock. The heat is definitely on. Yeah, it's, it's one of those days where you'll see a big swing in temperatures, right? It feels great right now, but it'll only last a few hours. Those temperatures will start to jump up. But let's get you out the door this morning. And uh, again, it's nice right now. Temperatures are sitting at 68 degrees. Uh, we'll be up near 86 by noontime, 93 for high. So that's that big swing that we're expecting later today. There is an outside chance for a shower storm, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. 10% chance. That's it. Most of us will not see any rain at all. Well, look at these numbers right now. 60 in Kerrville, 60 in Fredericksburg. Yes, there are some 50s in the Hill Country this morning. 64 out in Uvalde, 66 Pleasanton and around Bear County, uh, generally 60s. We've actually come up a degree here in town, 69, and there are a few clouds floating through at this hour. As we look at the pollen count, molds are moderate, 580, ragweed, fallen on pigweed, all there. That's pretty typical a fall allergen list there. We'll see where we land today. That pollen count in in about an hour or so. Did you get out the door this morning and get on the roads? What does your morning commute look like? Let's check in with Stephen for the latest there. Uh, it's just been good over here, Justin. I mean, honestly, really, uh, the morning has been pretty quiet. In fact, right now we are just seeing just maybe a few more vehicles out there. You can see at 1604 John Peace, it's getting busier, sure, but the problems really have been non-existent uh, this morning. And we know yesterday was a busy day on the roadways, so just remember to drive careful anytime there's uh, the roads are quiet an incident could still pop up but we take you to the map and there's really not a lot to talk about we did mention a crash that was off of 35 and anytime there's a crash that's not on the highway I'm never really too concerned about it but it doesn't look like it was even a serious issue because our map already cleared it out so fantastic news there and again just anytime that there is an incident you see those flashing lights a text out hero truck make sure to watch out for those first responders because it is still very dark out we take you to those travel times because things are also looking good here as well. It's pretty green if you're coming in from Seguin. I-10 westbound. Expect 29 minutes at 6.02 this morning. 33 minutes if you're traveling from 87 uh, to northbound heading into from Lavernia, pardon me, and that's pretty normal. And about a 28-minute drive time if you're a friend down in Floresville planning a trip to the Alamo City this early in the morning. So things are quiet right now. Again, we take it back to Transguide and show you just a busier commute, sure, but it's been a quiet start so far. Of course, we're going to have updates on those road closures, things to be on the lookout for in the next few minutes. Mark stuff.
Stephen, thank you. New this morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is hoping you can help them track down a man wanted for breaking into a local eye clinic and getting away with over $30,000 worth of merchandise. Camelia Juarez is following the story and takes a closer look at the suspect. Mark, Stephanie, deputies say he used a hammer to break into a Bernie Vision Center in a Fair Oaks shopping center. Here's a look at the suspect and the van he took off in. These pictures captured at the scene when it happened earlier this month. Deputies say the suspect was able to shatter the glass of the store with a hammer before breaking inside with the largest storage tub, packing inside at least 30,000 in merchandise. We're told after everything was loaded up, he took off in a white Ford Econoline cargo van with no front license plate. If you have any information about where he may be, you can call the Bear County Sheriff's Office number on your screen. You can also email tips at bcso.org. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Right now, San Antonio police investigating a couple of overnight shootings. This was the scene just after one this morning on Camino Villa near Bandera Road. We're told shots were fired after a road rage incident that happened down the road. We're going to try to show you that video shortly. Now, police tell us both drivers got out of their vehicles, and that's when one shot the other in both his legs. The suspect took off. And another overnight shooting. A man is in critical condition after he was shot twice. This happened around 1230 a.m. on Water's Edge near Southwest Loop 410. Police don't have much to go on in this case, and they say that suspect took off. A silver alert has been issued for a man last seen yesterday. Ingleside police are searching for 71-year-old Robert Gage. He was last seen yesterday morning in Ingleside. Police are concerned because he has a cognitive impairment and maybe a danger to his safety and health. If you have any information, contact Ingleside Police at the number on your screen. That is 361-776-2531. Now to another story developing overnight. Florida's governor sending dozens of migrants on planes to Massachusetts. To move that echoes Governor Greg Abbott's decision to bus migrant to other states, ABC's Rhiannon Alley has the details. This morning, another Republican leader is sending undocumented migrants to a sanctuary state, escalating the standoff over the surge of migration at the southern border. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's office says it chartered two planes to fly migrants from Florida to Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. The island off of Cape Cod is famous for its multi-million dollar homes. Fox News first airing video of the migrants deboarding, about 50, reportedly from Venezuela. Some as young as two years old. Local government officials say they had no advance notice. The airport director said that local officials had no idea that these immigrants were coming, that these planes were coming. But he said that there was there were vans outside that were waiting for the immigrants. DeSantis saying in a statement, states like Massachusetts, New York and California will better facilitate the care of these individuals who they have invited into our country by incentivizing illegal immigration through their designation as sanctuary states. Texas Governor Greg Abbott began busing migrants to other states in April. Just yesterday, Illinois' governor called up the National Guard to help with migrants sent to Chicago from Texas, calling Abbott's move a stunt. They won't tell us how many infants, or children, seniors, or families are on board. They won't provide any information that would actually help their fellow Americans welcome and care for these human beings. Back on Martha's Vineyard, the migrants spent the night in beds at this local church after receiving food at a school cafeteria. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. You know, the news, the mayor of View Valley is hoping that an app will make people feel safer in the area after, after the Robb Elementary School shooting. The app acts as a mobile panic alert system. Now, here's how the Safer Watch app works. An authorized employee can push a panic button that will notify the Uvalde Police Department and issue a lockdown. Now, people can also submit anonymous tips through the app, something the Uvalde mayor says could have been helpful last week when two people were shot at Uvalde Memorial Park in what police describe as gang violence. As soon as we knew the vehicle description, that app put it out all over the community. And if you have it, we can do it. And like I said, we're only as good as, as the information we get from, from citizens. The app is free to download in both the Google Play and Apple App Store. And again, it's called the Safer Watch app.
That's right. And it's been more than a month and people living in the community of Derby are still without running water. Since then, donations of bottled water have been delivered, but those who live there worry it will not last until water well repairs are made. Rio County Judge Arnulfo Luna tells us they already hit their budget for hauling tanks of water to Derby. That water is supposed to be for utilities. The judge adds they still can provide bottled drinking water. What we were told is that water was only provided to residents there for the first two weeks. It could be. Uh, what happened after the first two weeks? That I couldn't tell you. The county judge says if residents run out, all they have to do is call the county and they will send more. We also spoke to the owner of Derby ING, the water company. He still does not have a timeline for when repairs will be finished. Both officials with the Texas Center for Environmental Quality and the Texas Water Development Board say they are working with the company to get the repairs expedited. And taking a live look at Westminster Hall in London this morning. Now to London, where members of the public are lining up to say goodbye to their beloved queen. Britain's longest serving monarch will lie in state until Monday, brought there from Buckingham Palace in a solemn procession. ABC's Inez de la Quatera is in London with more. Through the night, thousands lining up outside of Westminster Hall, where Queen Elizabeth II now lies in state. Inside it was amazing. It was really quiet and uh, yeah, you just couldn't help but feel emotional. The queue snaking along the River Thames and over Lambeth Bridge, nearly three miles long at one point. Inside, some pausing for a moment, others bowing to the monarch. For many people, they just want to be part of history. I think no matter how you feel about the monarchy in the UK, there is a love and adoration for the Queen. And so for everyone who has the chance, they do want to go there and show their respects. The Queen brought to this resting place in a solemn 38-minute procession. Thousands of well-wishers coming to watch as her coffin was carried over from Buckingham Palace on a horse-drawn carriage, draped in the royal standard and topped with the imperial state crown. I was five when the Queen became Queen, and she has been the mainstay and the constant in my life. I'm now 75, and I just thought I should mark her passing. The Queen's family following the coffin, King Charles flanked by his siblings, Princess Anne, Prince Andrew, and Prince Edward. And in a show of unity, Princes William and Harry side by side. The crowd spontaneously breaking into applause as minute guns were fired and the bells of Big Ben tolled. And the Queen's state funeral will be held on Monday at Westminster Abbey. Her coffin will then be brought in a procession to St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, her final resting place. In de la Quatera, ABC News, London. 11 minutes past the hour, 68 degrees. Familiar face, drop by to see WNBA head coach Becky Hammond. She's one game away from a huge win. Who is that guy again? Remind me. Yeah, that's okay. Coach Pop. <laughs> Amazon may soon be facing some legal troubles. How it involves the prices you are paying. And taking a look outside with live cam. Yay, if you haven't stepped outside, 68 degrees, we can enjoy that at least for the morning hours. We'll be right back. Exactly 6.15, a new legal fight involving the prices we all pay on Amazon. California is suing, claiming the e-commerce giant has illegally kept prices high. ABC's Andrea Fujii explains. This morning, Amazon under fire, accused of stifling competition. The price is artificially inflated on Amazon's site. California's attorney general talking about a new lawsuit from the state claiming Amazon has violated antitrust laws. The suit claims for years the company has required sellers to enter into contracts that penalize them if their products are offered elsewhere at a lower price. The alleged punishments would include receiving a less prominent spot on the site or being taken off Amazon altogether. In the end, the attorney general says consumers end up paying more. Causing increased prices for families across California. In order to avoid competing on prices with other online e-commerce sites. The lawsuit is asking Amazon to pay damages and stop entering into contracts that harm price competition. 
Amazon vowing to fight the lawsuit, saying sellers set their own prices. The relief the AG seeks would force Amazon to feature higher prices to customers. Amazon has been under scrutiny before. It recently settled two antitrust investigations in Europe. And here in the U.S., federal officials launched an investigation over the summer into workplace safety concerns. Chaos or chaos. Chaos. We work like a dog there. We work very hard, stand on our feet for 12 hours. Amazon insisting safety is a top priority. The Federal Trade Commission is also investigating Amazon Prime sign up and cancellation practices. Washington, D.C. filed an antitrust case against Amazon similar to California. A judge dismissed that complaint earlier this year. But California officials say their two-year investigation will help them secure a different outcome. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. 17 minutes past the hour. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Uh, again, I have had a very easy morning over here, guys. You know, it was very busy yesterday, but thankfully right now, looks like drivers are in the clear as we get a wide look from Transguide. There you can see 10 at Callahan. The commute's getting busier, and we are seeing that some of those issues uh, tend to pop up around this time. But right now, I would say just watch out because 10 at Presley, you can see there, we have a lot of moving vehicles at this hour. But we take you to the map, and as I mentioned, some of those incidents already start to pop up. Whenever you see a yellow icon, like that. That means that there is slow moving traffic and it looks like that's the case there near State Highway 151 and Loop 410. I'll get a closer look and find out exactly how that could impact the drive time, but I'm not seeing a whole lot of red on the screen, just a lot of green, which is what we love to see. But let's talk about some gas prices because uh, I want to mention some of these really quickly here. AAA right now reporting the average gas price in Bear County is 307 here in Kendall or over in Kendall County, $3.20. And for our friends in Guadalupe County, the average gas price looks like it's $3 and five cents. But as a quick reminder, it is an ozone action day. So make sure that if you do head to the gas station that you fill up a little bit later in the evening and try not to fuel it up to the top. Of course, uh, those are your AAA gas prices. So just know what you can expect before you head to the pump. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then Justin, I know, you know, here it's 68, 69 degrees, but yeah. maybe in some areas, a light sweater at the bus stop. I think so. I mean, it's it's a close call, but I think so. With temperatures in the 50s in a few spots, yeah, like jacket might not be a bad idea for the kids as they head out the door this morning. Let's roll in the bus. The forecast for today, 68 degrees this morning, at least here in San Antonio. But as I said, you get up towards Bernie and Comfort. Temperatures are in the 50s this morning. Coolest, by the way, since May, late May that we've seen here in South Texas. Light winds this morning by this afternoon. No jacket needed. 93 degrees. The high temperature, partly cloudy skies and southeasterly winds around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Uh, let's go outside for you. There's the scene here in San Antonio. A few clouds trying to roll through at this hour. 69 officially at the airport right now. Calm winds and that dew point is up just a little bit. 63, but dropped overnight. And that's one of the reasons we saw or we're seeing these cooler temperatures. The dew points are starting to increase because we've got some good moisture on the coast that's trying to spread inland. You go into the hill country, dew points are still in the 50s, and that's where you find some of the coolest numbers this morning. And as we look at the numbers, 65 New Braunfels, 70 in Gonzales, but 59 right now in Kerrville, 63 in Hondo, and a little closer look here around Bear County. Birdie stage has dropped to 57. 59 in comfort as well elsewhere. 60s for the most part with a few 70s mixed in here and there. Big swing in temperatures today. You know how this works with some drier air. We'll start off in the 60s, but by this afternoon into the low 90s. And we will add in some humidity today, I think, by the time we get into uh, midday and maybe the afternoon. In the next few days, humidity levels will be a little bit higher. But a 25 degree swing today with those temperatures. Here's a look at the forecast. When it comes to rain, a couple of showers along the coast by midday. Some of those try to make a run for I-35 uh, around dinner time, maybe this evening. It's a 10% chance of rain. It's not a good one. And if you do see rain, it's not going to last very long and it won't add up to much. This is the kind of pattern and kind of setup we'll have next few days. So 10% chance of rain today, Friday and Saturday before high pressure takes over. And basically it takes rain out of the forecast. 78 by 10 a.m. today, noontime 86, partly cloudy, 88 by 1 p.m. We're up around 93 as we set for a high with partly cloudy skies and light southeasterly winds. Here is a look at the uh, big picture here, the upper level winds. And ridge of high pressure begins to build out west and then it sits over top of us. This is that ridge that we don't like so much. We see a lot of times in the summer, the heat high. It'll be over us Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, even 
probably Thursday of next week, and that allows temperatures to be very warm. Now, this is not record setting heat, but it is above average. Our temperatures average about 90 to 89 this time of year. We're looking at 95, 96 potentially by early next week. So, yeah, it's going to be toasty. Very quickly, we've got to talk about Tropical Storm Fiona. It's still out there in the Atlantic. Winds at 50 miles per hour, gusting to 60. This is going to work its way over Puerto Rico and then start to take a little bit of a turn to the north, I think. That means chances are this does not have any effect on the Gulf of Mexico or Texas and probably stay, stays out over the open Atlantic. There are those small rain chances next few days, 94 Sunday, and then the warmer temperatures next week with mostly sunny skies, guys. Really warm there. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Justin. Thank you very much, Justin. Before we go to break real quick, uh, we've just got some breaking news that two migrant buses have just arrived outside of Vice President Kamala Harris's Naval Observatory residence in the nation's capital. More details as we get them. We'll be right back. Ladies, six minutes, please. <laughs> this is my life. It's not always picture perfect. Plus, I'm dealing with bleeding from uterine fibroids. Enter my Fembry. A once daily pill for women with heavy menstrual bleeding due to uterine fibroids. With my Fembry, heavy bleeding went down by 84%. Serious risks include heart attack, stroke, and blood clots. Don't take my Fembry if you've had any of these or have uncontrolled high blood pressure, are over 35 and smoke, could be pregnant, or have or had osteoporosis, liver disease, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, certain cancers, or an allergic reaction to it. Don't use longer than two years as bone loss may occur. Pregnancy loss can occur and changes in periods may make it hard to know if you're pregnant. If you think you are, stop taking it right away. Other risks are depression, suicidal thoughts or actions, abnormal liver tests, high blood pressure, and passing of the fibroid. Less bleeding, same life. I'll take it. Ask your doctor about my Fembry. My life, my Fembry. For me, I always tell my teams the sweetest wins are which ones? The ones on the road. The ones on the road, baby. <laughs> the ones on the road, and that's where you're going. They're the sweetest. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich dropped in on the Las Vegas Aces locker room Tuesday night after their 85-71 victory over the Connecticut Sun. His protege, Becky Hammond, one win away from her first ever WNBA championship in her first season as a head coach. Game three against Connecticut is tonight at 8 on ESPN. And if you follow the Spurs on Instagram, you can find Coach Pops speech on there as well. We're just looking at it right now. Pretty cool. 626, 68 degrees. And what changes could the city see after today's city council meeting? We're going to have more after the break. And checking the roads with Trans Guy 281 at the quarry. Quite a few cars and bright streetlights. Even more cars at 281 at 410 at that big flyover interchange by the airport. A call for help as firefighters answering only steps away from their own door. They have to help a man who showed up with a gunshot wound. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why there was concern for while they also might be in danger. And we've reached mid-September and we'll take temperatures in the upper 60s to start, start our day. Good morning, everybody. A Thursday, September 15th. Thanks for joining us. It's pretty exciting. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and step outside and enjoy that 68 degrees that we have right now. Now it is going to warm up later on yeah. today, but we're hoping for a gradual cool down tonight to get off uh, high school football coverage again. Yeah. Yes, it won't be as nice as it is this morning. I'll just go ahead and tell you that right off the bat, but it is still going to be pretty good for Thursday night football tonight as uh, games get underway. We think temperatures will be probably in the 90s. We'll go ahead and uh, give it the old kick. <laughs> Never very good at that, uh, but it always goes through 88 degrees at kickoff. We'll see sunset around 739. Halftime is it uh, will be at 84. There could be a stray storm and we remember last Friday where we had stray storm and it was right place. Bad timing. Uh, it uh, postponed a lot of games. I don't think that'll be the case tonight, but we will keep an eye on the radar. There could be one or two storms popping up. Big story this morning, temperatures. We're in the 50s in Kerrville. It's 59 degrees there, 65 in New Braunfels, 69 here in San Antonio, 67 Pleasanton. Most places in the 60s here around San Antonio this morning. This is the coolest we've been since late May, and it feels amazing outside. We do want to remind you, and Stephen mentioned this earlier, it is an ozone action day. So for those who are sensitive to that kind of thing, if you have asthma, Heads up, another day, third day in a row, we have an ozone action day in place. Let's get you out the door this morning. Temperatures 
We'll start in the 60s, yes, but uh, we'll warm up very quickly once that sun comes up. 86 noontime, we're up to 93 for a high today. And there won't be a ton of humidity, but humidity will be increasing here over the next couple of days. We'll talk more about that forecast the weekend. How is it looking? More on that in just a bit. Let's go over to Stephen now. Some issues starting to crop up. Yeah, some, but I missed the football, Justin. I'm sorry. That's okay. Passing in my way. So, uh, <laughs> all right, let's get a look at the roadways. 281, you can see it is getting busier out there. Always expected we are entering morning rush, so it is a busy time right now on the roadways. And you can see it there. 281 there at Loop 1604, 35 at Thousand Oaks, and I 10 at the Y. It is that busy time again. So, just remember, we're going to see a little bit of a slowdown, uh, slowdowns, I should say, taking place in the usual trouble spots. But we also are detecting some problems out on the roadway. Uh, I do want to mention this because we talked about this yellow icon, which in indicates some restricted flow, meaning some slow moving traffic. Uh, according to what our map is detecting is that there's a stalled vehicle out there. So just watch out for that. But not the only stalled vehicle we're seeing, especially if you're driving up from 37 northbound, uh, heading up from Pleasanton, you'll likely see this stalled vehicle in the northbound lanes of 410 as you approach 37. Just watch out for that and check your vehicles before you get out on the roadways. Uh, it doesn't appear that it's causing any issues with traffic just yet, but uh, always good to make sure that you watch out and you know what to expect when you get out on the roads. 410 cool but again, one last look at Transguide. It's getting busier, but we'll watch the roads closely. And as always, make sure you do the same. Mark Seff. Thank you, sir. New this morning, a man in need of help after a shooting overnight found it close at hand. San Antonio police say he was able to walk to a fire station across the street from where he was shot. It happened near Culebra Road and Zarzamora. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. And Katrina, what is the latest on his condition? Well, police told us that man had been shot in his belly. He was stable as he left for a hospital by ambulance. But for a while, they were worried that he might not have been the only person targeted by the shooter. Police say after that man showed up at the fire station around 4 this morning asking for help, firefighters heard more shots fired and were worried some of them might be aimed at their station. Now, no one was hit by gunfire there. Police say the man was shot across the street behind the Dollar Tree store. They believe the shots came from a car that had three people, two men and a woman, inside. Police are still investigating, but they say that this may have stemmed from a drug deal. Now, the man who was shot was in his 20s or 30s, according to police, and they are still looking for the shooters. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, a man waking up behind bars after police say he shot someone while on the road. This is 18 year old Beto Hernandez. According to an arrest affidavit, it happened last month at the intersection of South New Braunfels. Investigators say he shot the victim while he was in his car. Hernandez is facing a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And some adjustments made to San Antonio City budget proposal. City Council will take up a final vote later today. That includes more money for the Martin Luther King Jr. March, more funding for sidewalk repairs, and extending the city pool season. We are still waiting to see what Council will do with the $50 million and extra CPS energy revenue that's coming in. Many of the members of Council did not seem to support the plan to send rebates to customers. The city's in need of blood, and today there's a blood drive being held at the College of Healthcare Professions over on Northwest Loop 410. It's from 9 a.m. to 2, and today the community has a two-day blood supply, and typo blood is in a, a day short of the seven days needed. You can schedule to give blood by visiting southtexasblood.org slash give or calling 731-5590. Walk-ins will be accepted as space allows. Well, now to the latest between railroad companies and union officials. President Biden released a statement not too long ago about a tentative deal overnight. The agreement came after 20 consecutive hours of negotiations at the Department of Labor. ABC's Justin Finch has the latest on that story. With each passing hour, the country moves closer to tonight's midnight deadline that could see some 60,000 rail workers go on strike if their union and rail companies can't come to a labor agreement, the cost of which would wreck the nation's economy. Estimates from the rail companies is $2 billion per day. So that adds up really quick. 
Amtrak already canceling long-distance trips across 14 of its routes. Nearly all Amtrak trains outside its northeast corridor line could face shutdowns on local commuter lines from coast to coast. From cars to crops, close to a third of the nation's freight moves on the rails. There's a lot of fear. We need government to step in. In the Washington, D.C. area, a strike could tie up chlorine shipments used for providing safe drinking water and treat wastewater. A work stoppage could also stifle the U.S.'s strain supply chain. It means that you could see empty shelves at your store where goods that were supposed to get there just could not get there. In recent years, railroad companies cut thousands of jobs and have earned near record profits. A sticking point in labor talks now, sick leave. Just trying to get us some sick time to be able to take care of one, ourselves, and two, our loved ones. And that's what we're fighting for. Washington watching and hoping for compromise, but preparing just in case. We're really uh, working with uh, and trying to figure out with other modes of transportation how to move forward. Should a strike happen, Congress could step in to extend the cool-off period and mandate more negotiations or force terms recommended by the presidential board on the unions and carriers. The Senate needs 60 votes to end the strike, but the time to get that done is very narrow. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. In Minnesota, 15,000 nurses are on strike and they're pushing for higher wages and better staffing conditions at their hospitals. At M Health Fairview in Minnesota, nurses had their third and final day of the strike. The nurses are asking for a 30% wage increase over the course of the next three years and hospitals are reportedly willing to offer slightly less than half of that. The Minnesota Nurses Association says their main concerns are still staffing, safety and pay. This is the front line. You can't ignore the front line. If you don't take care of the front line, you don't have a line. Representatives from Elena Health and St. Luke say they remain committed to moving forward and finalizing a fair contract. And trending right now on KSET.com, more than 200 cases of a popular Starbucks drink are being recalled because it may have metal in them. Now, according to the FDA, the 15-ounce Starbucks Vanilla Espresso Triple Shot Drink, which comes with 12 bottles in a case, the recall was initiated in mid-August but didn't come out until last week. That recall affects stores in seven states, including right here in Texas. Check this out. A UTSA professor visited a thrift store in Georgia and walked away with a rare treasure. William Pugh came across an original painting by cherished African-American artist Keith Bankston. It only cost him $125, and he ended up donating it to a collection at a museum in Georgia. You can read more about both these stories on KSAT.com. Oh, cool find. Yeah. Time now, 638 and 69 degrees for now. Looking for a new job? Quite a few folks are. Coming up next, we'll have the top tools you need to make your job search easier. 642, there are more than 5.7 million people looking for jobs right now. Sometimes job hunting can be a full-time job. Trying to navigate the millions of job openings can make it even more overwhelming, but there are some free online tools that can help. KSAT's RJ Marquez reports. Everywhere you look, employers are looking for help. On average, each corporate job offer attracts 250 resumes. Of those candidates, 46 will get called for an interview and only one will get the job. So that's why applying to more than one is a must. But filling out applications and updating cover letters can be overwhelming. There are tools that can make your job search easier. TextBlaze can save you time by storing pre-saved messages and wording that you can use and customize for each application. Microsoft Editor is a browser extension that scans your documents and highlights any errors. About 77% of hiring managers said in a career builder survey that typos on a resume was an instant deal breaker. And if you ever wondered if your emailed application was ever opened, you can check with MailTrack. The Chrome browser extension works with Gmail to let you know if your email was opened and how many times it was. If you want to send a resume to a company but they have no job openings advertised, you can use the tools Contact Out or Discoverly to find the contact information of a specific person, like the person in charge of recruitment. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. 643. And starting to see flashing lights out there on Transguide. Check in with Steven. Just got off the phone with our friends at Transguide minutes ago, guys. In fact, uh, this was just reported a few minutes ago, 410 at Fredericksburg. You see those flashing lights out there, and it's not a good area because 410 over near the north central side does tend to pick up pretty quickly. And this does look like it's in a busy spot as uh, folks are approaching the traffic lights there. So thankfully, it's not on the highway. Right now, we have no information. This was just reported right now. We caught it on the San Antonio Fire page. 
stage. We'll have to find out the location and of course uh, that information on any possible injuries. But as always, we hope everybody's doing OK. Let's go ahead and just get you to the map and we'll get that pinpointed before the show wraps up. But you can see that it is getting busier out there. We did have a stalled vehicle over on the southeast side that's already cleared out, but I do want to get you over here to I 35 as well. It's a busy spot usually, uh, but in the northbound lanes, there is some debris that was spread out on the roadway. Looks like that's already been cleared out, but just remember to keep your eyes on the road. And as a quick reminder, 410 on the west side of San Antonio, it's something we've talked about, guys. That pavement work will continue for another few more nights up until September 27th, 7 in the evening to 5 in the morning, alternating main lane closures in both directions from Ingram Road to US 90. So just know what you can expect overnight, but also know what you can expect out here at 410 at Fredericksburg. It is getting busier. We'll work to find out some information, but as always, we hope everybody's doing okay. Guys, we agree. Thank you, yeah, Stephen. Uh, I know you have something behind it. Might be, it might be hard for you to see at home, but I can see it here in the studio. We're, we're going to try this again. I think you can see it. Uh, this is another case that connects uh, video of the International Space Station, and RJ is going to help me out here. If you can go ahead and hit, hit play for me, you can actually see it going across there the sky right there. That's cool. Uh, I know it, it is hard to see, but it is there. Uh, and Skywatcher sent this in. It was it was a cool shot. Of what's the going ISS. the other way? Yeah, what's was, going the other way? Was that what's an that? airplane or? It could have been. It could have been. I think that. I think that's the correct one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Or we just fooled you and showed you two moths. There was a lot happening. Uh, yes, it could have been that too. No, uh, the International Space Space Station was visible last night, and uh, we did get some video and pictures, and it's always cool to see. It, there's another opportunity tonight. Now it's not as good as it was last night. The uh, the viewing because it's a little bit shorter, but it will be there. 9:19. Uh, it starts in the west northwest and then goes to the north. It ends at 923 if you want to check it out. Let's talk about fronts now. We do have some drier air in here this morning. The reason we have some cooler readings, uh, but let's talk about the average first front. When do we get that big 10 degree temperature drop? Well, as you look at the uh, the timeline here, 2019 it was around October 11th. Last year, was September 22nd, 2017 and 2016 it was September 26th and then 2020 was as early as September 4th. So you average all that out and you get late September is kind of the average when we first we see that first big 10 degree drop uh, with a front. We'll see if that happens this year. So far, there's no indication that we have a front in the forecast. And, and look, this is, a, you know, sort of a nebulous thing. The averages are there late September, yes, but it could be any time between now and even late October. We'll see. Hopefully we get a front through here and uh, it does cool us down and it'll feel a lot nicer than it has been because temperatures have been pretty hot, especially during the afternoon. Now this morning does feel good. 69 degrees, dew point at 64, calm winds. Uh, we've been as low as 68 at the airport, but temperatures coming up just a little bit. We are starting to get some clouds moving in and look at the numbers in Kerrville. 59 degrees there. Some places in the 50s uh, like Bernie and Comfort and Kerrville. Everyone else in the 60s and uh, even a few 70s. Canyon Lake and Stinson checking in low 70s there. Dew point trend today. Yeah, it'll be a little bit low this morning, but we'll see the numbers come up some and then the, by the afternoon kind of plateau a little bit. But in general, Dew points are going to be on the rise next few days. 93, the forecast high here in San Antonio. You'll find some cooler numbers to the north and 90s San Antonio points south. As far as rain goes, a couple opportunities here for some very small rain chances. Showers gather along the coast around noontime. A few of those showers make a run for the I-35 corridor by this afternoon. Can't rule it out completely, but rain chances only at 10 percent. Uh, it is low. Meantime, high pressure begins to build in, and this will be the story late in the weekend and into early next week. With this big ridge of high pressure over top of us, rain goes away, temperatures will be nice and warm, well above average. We're thinking mid 90s, so yeah, return to summer. Does not feel a whole lot like fall out there. And very quickly, we do need to touch on the fact that Fiona is out there. Tropical storm Fiona makes its way west towards the Leeward Islands, Puerto Rico, and then starts to take a turn to the north at this point. Does not look like it will affect the Gulf of Mexico or Texas. Small rain chances Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 94 on Sunday, and some hot temperatures with mostly sunny skies next week. Well, hopefully that will change when it's like really fall, fall, like officially fall yeah, later on. Yeah, we will get some fronts through here. It's just uh, there's nothing imminent yet. Hopefully late September, early October, we'll get there. What's the first day again? 
Next Thursday? Next Thursday. Okay. First official so, day of fall. Uh, by default, we want you to start rounding temperatures down. Okay, we yes. can do that. Uh, overall, even if you're, you're kind of cheating yourself a little okay. bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Some well, wish casting. Yeah. Yes. Wish casting. That's, yes. That's, that's we perfect. can do that. That's, that's a good perfect. thing. Uh, 649, 68 degrees. And coming up later this morning on GMSA at 9, a local nonprofit is working to reduce unhealthy eating by increasing access to fresh produce. Tiffany Huetas will take us to Gardovia Garden and show us how they are educating a new generation. That's today on GMSA at 9. We are always happy when you start your day with GMSA outside with live cam right now. A few clouds out there, but it's still a pretty day. And we are enjoying temperatures, as we said, in the upper 60s here in town. We'll be back. It wasn't a ringing alarm, but a knock on the door that got some firefighters out of bed overnight. They had to tend to a man who showed up with a gunshot wound. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The shooting happened across the street from their fire station at Culebra Road and Zarzamora. Now, for a while, there were more police there than anything else. Firefighters told police they thought some of the shots may have been fired in their direction. Officers did not find anyone or anything there at the station that had been hit. The man told them he was shot across the street behind a Dollar Tree store around 4 this morning. Police found shell casings and a blood trail in that area. They say the man was wounded in his belly but stable as he left for a hospital. And police believe that this shooting may have stemmed from a drug deal. Now they are still looking for the shooter, one of three people in a car. Reporting near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And now to a developing story we are continuing to follow this morning. After more than 36 hours, San Antonio police are still trying to convince a barricaded man to surrender. It's been going on since Tuesday at a Southeast Side mobile home. Camelia Juarez is staying on top of the story. Right now, police have blocked off the entire street Diamondback Trail, only letting neighbors in. That's why we're so far from everything else. Now, so far that we've been out here, we've been hearing police talk to him. They've been calling him Bartholomew over the speakers, telling him to come out with his hands up. Police even told him that the news was here. Ultimately, we've been told there have been no changes over the last 36 hours. It started Tuesday night when a 28 year old man was reported acting erratic even shooting at his own dog. No one was hurt. According to police preliminary reports, it was initially a mental health call. He has a history of violence. He has an outstanding warrant for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Police have been talking to him over the intercom speakers, and that's what we've been hearing for the last hour or so. We're going to stay on top of this for the rest of the morning. Camelia Juarez, Case at 12 News. Now five minutes till seven. And we still have flashing lights out there at I-10 in Frio. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, uh, looks pretty bad out there, right? Especially because commute is getting busy. But this is a stalled vehicle in the eastbound lanes of 10. So you have to watch out there. Move over, slow down. Those are the rules of the road. But taking you to the map, seeing the usual slowdowns that are already picking up uh, right there along US 90, 1604, 410, and 35. So expect those slowdowns, Justin Horn. Thank you, sir. And the big story this morning has been those cool temperatures. We're down into the upper 60s uh, right now, 68 degrees here in San Antonio, but there are some 50s on the map this morning. This does not last long. These cooler temperatures will be close to 86 by noontime, 93 this afternoon. There are some very small chances of rain, and that's the case the next few days, including Friday and Saturday. But after that, well, it's a lot like our summer forecast, uh, dry, hot temperatures in the mid 90s uh, each and every day, 95 Monday, 96 on Tuesday. Uh, so this is kind of the last of our cool mornings. Enjoy it uh, because it's uh, fleeting, even though fall is just around the corner, guys. Just around just the corner. Around. Uh, what is officially next Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping, you know, maybe it'll happen again after next Thursday. One week from will. today. Well, we'll, we'll okay. get there. Okay. And don't forget, you had days of, or days till, uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow is 100 days till Christmas. Oh, Mike Osterhage <laughs> must be. Get away for Halloween first. We'll <laughs> yes. see you back here at 9.